Justin messing up his live stream once again with <laughs> the many, many, many technical difficulties. You think I just learned how to do this, but um, I'm out in bed Brooklyn. Do, do or, or die. die. Do or die, right? Do or die, bed Brooklyn. <laughs> it is no longer do or die. It's highly gentrified, so now it's more like, you know, Midwest Manhattan. gentrifiers. Yeah, look a lot like Manhattan, downtown Manhattan used to be. We have Crypto Blood here, um, and he came to New York to attend the NFT NYC BS E BS <laughs> nonsense. Um, pretty much, pretty I, much, Reggie. Shout out to Trek. He was uh, he was down here with me. Okay, um, I see. There's only four viewers here, so it looks as if I actually might have messed this video up once again, and They're coming in. did not make it public because usually I have a lot more than this. So hold for one second. You know what? I'm not even going to mess it up. So uh, I'll change it after the it's fact. They're coming in. Okay, it comes in a lot faster than that, though. So I actually have a decent, I have a strong YouTube following. Yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, but neither here or there. Thumbs up. That, yeah. Thumbs up for ready to start doing videos more frequently. Like yeah, that that is true. <laughs> you know, I'm going to pick a time and date, and I'm going to try and do it weekly. So, in the NFT NYC thing, in my opinion, it was basically, you know, just nonsense. Cash you know? grab. Yeah. Number one, I feel most of the participants didn't even know what NFTs are. Okay, I, mean, I, I went and asked a couple of the guys there, because nobody recognized me, um, what is the NFT? They said, it's a non-fungible token. What is that? Uh, uh, and it stopped right there. <laughs> okay, now I've always tell you for the last year or so, I said, you know, the killer use case, the killer app for NFTs has always been ID Property. and contracts. Right. NFT as a contract is dynamic because you can have a contract that um, not only is unique and identifies the unique, but controls the actual cash. So you have a contract that has the money built in and programmable, so it could give you money out, take it back. I'll give you uh, two extremes examples of NFTs. One is the Board 8 Yacht Club. Enough said for those who actually understand where I'm coming from. Another example of an NFT is what I would call a serialized NFT. Uh, think of a song by Beyonce, okay? So normally Beyonce takes a song, she puts it on Spotify. That file is streamed, so it's replicated and streamed to whatever millions um, subscribers of Spotify. Beyonce makes a serial NFT, so each file is unique. File one, file two, file three, up to 60, 70, 100 million, okay? you would pay 20 cents for that song or you pay a subscription to be able to download that file stream that file plus a couple of hundred more but if you put in fifty thousand dollars you send fifty thousand dollars to that particular uh files address you can buy dinner with beyonce mm -hmm. okay there's 10 dinner slots left for the week beyonce pulls in a half a million dollars and free meal Okay, and some of you get, you know, the date of your dreams, or at least the dinner of your dreams. Not a date. Okay. Jigga ain't having that. <laughs> so that's the example of current NFT perception. Right. And the real thing. Right. Okay. Serialization of NFTs can be very, very, very powerful. Okay, that's just one example off the top of my head. So um, I can tell you about my experience there. I'm gonna tell you a little bit, and I like. Blood share his own. Well, I mean, you know, I got in tail end of the um, of the week, and uh, I know Reggie went Monday and pretty much rage quit. Um, <laughs> Wednesday, I mean, it was just you know, it's just interesting seeing like this new uh, class of of crypto individuals coming in. I was telling him, you know, a lot of the people got into NFTs without touching Bitcoin or Ethereum. You know, of course, a little Ethereum because they have to use it for gas but they have no understanding of any of the history of blockchain or the underlying technology or the underlying right. technology it's just so interesting how we have a new and i mean you know it is what it is we we, we are where we are with things but i think it's uh, important to understand the infrastructure um in any space you're getting into a little bit at least a little bit right that's how you avoid losses you know what it is that you're buying yeah very true so it's um it's interesting to see a lot of i think i'm calling it a cash grab it it it, it seems a lot like the ico days 
um, where you had projects just coming out with no real um, blueprint, right? And mm -hmm. they're just cash grab. I'm seeing that with the NFT space. Everyone wants to turn an NFT into some art, and they, you know, they got, and that's fine. That, that is a use case for NFTs without a shadow of a doubt, and that will be a market. But I think that, um, assuming you have ownership of the art, assuming you have ownership of so, the art, yeah. absolutely. Most of this has no ownership attached to it. You simply have access to a replication of the art piece with no intellectual property rights whatsoever. I'm more excited about, you know, property being represented as an NFT, <clears throat> uh, you know, things that really will have uh, more GDP um, impact, you know, the things that will actually be used in the, in, in the world, in the, in the business world. So that's what I'm more excited about versus these, uh, what I'm seeing mostly at N NYT or NFC NFT NYC is, is a lot of pixelated bullshit. I'm just gonna yeah. call it what it is. Not I, go ahead. I, I told Reggie I'm gonna send the documentary to him, the watch of the Board Eight Yacht Club expose on on their whole background and and how they came about. I think it's uh it's enlightening. I mean it's just it's crazy. So he's gonna check it out. Hopefully he he'll talk more about it on the channel later. Okay. In the meantime, there are 48 people here that 19 likes. I understand it's impromptu. 51. So listen, you other 31 people, just hit the like button and hit share and spread the love, okay? Um, just share it right now. Now, here's an observation. I'm not going to call out any names because I'm not trying to be a troublemaker, even though I don't mind being a troublemaker, but I want to be ethical and polite and professional. Um, I did go back Wednesday because I got, got for a lot of money for this <laughs> NFT <laughs> conference. <laughs> and one second there was this was totally silent right before i hit of record course. for this video and all this background noise is coming up so i went with my daughter who's 16 very very bright lady and it's not nepotism she's actually very smart like got me beat by a mile okay and she said i don't get this i'm like you get everything <laughs> you know you got it this is there's not a lot of value here but that's very different from saying there's not a lot of value in nfts nfts yes, are well, really 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 promising for the future absolutely i went back wednesday i skipped tuesday um and i went back wednesday and it's unbelievable the amount of background noise that came as soon as i hit record right so wednesday i went there and i went to the legal um symposium within nft nyc it was a bunch of lawyers going back and forth and they talked about a lot of risks they had three major risks the number one risk they say is trademark oh, risk ip risk the number two they said is copyright risk ip the number three they said is the um uniform commercial code basically disclaiming functionality fitness etc okay and i'm like hmm so they wouldn't allow me to ask a question nobody knows who i am it's a whole new you know a whole new generation of uh, crypto guys and um i'll leave it there so I had to go and tackle the lawyers after the fact. There were about at least a couple of dozen lawyers. They were rotating on and off the screen. Um, not naming any lawyers individually, but I personally didn't think they had a grasp on legal risk. Okay? So by far, the biggest risk with NFTs is IP risk, and it's not copyright and trademark, it's patent risk. Okay? The concept of the NFT was patented more than once a while back. I asked lawyers about it, and again, I'm not going to name any names, and don't take this personal. We don't agree if the lawyers are listening, which I doubt they will be, okay? I said, so how come you didn't mention patent risk? They said, because there is none. I said, why do you think so? He says, there may be patent risk for the platforms who host it, OpenSea, etc. Definitely there is, but we are going to get to it at another time. But he says, there's no risk for the issuers and the holders and the sellers of the um, NFT. And I'm like, why not? He says, because it's simple. It's only a couple of lines of code. And I said, listen, patent risk is not predicated upon how many lines of code it is. It's predicated upon whether the idea was patented or not. It's just that simple. They don't call it um, code quantity risk. They call it patent <laughs> right. risk. Right. Okay? Um, he disagreed with me. And I said, well, I can tell you for a fact that there's um, multiple, at least two patent holders who have a claim. Um, 
One is that tall, real good looking brother from Brooklyn. Okay. Sitting next to the other brother from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> he's not from Brooklyn. That's the only reason. I'm not saying he's not, tall, not good looking. Okay. And um, I said, I said, look it up. Um, and then the other one is Dr. Craig Wright. Craig Wright. He's been on um, LinkedIn and he's been making noise about how he's going to have lawsuits flying in a few months and he's going to end all the fraud that is NFTs. I'm not going to comment on... Hold for one second. Let me not Here compete with this siren. Honestly, it was you absolutely no noise. Yeah. There was absolutely no noise for like an hour before I hit record. Okay, so. So, every time I bring Craig right up, it seems to get emotional. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to opine upon whether he's Satoshi or not. I don't care. Honestly, I, don't th I think you guys care too much. Um, but he does have 53 issue patents, last time I checked. And even though most are minutiae, two or three, two or three have some meat on it. Um, he has patents issued out of the UK and uh, Europe through the EPO, European Patent Office, which covers the UK and the uh, Europe, Eurozone, give or take. And that is for, I'm trying to remember the title, um, Identification of Assets on a Digital digital Rights Management on the Blockchain. I think that's what it's called. And I think that's what he's referring to in terms of uh, um, NFT patents. I'm not sure because I don't have an incentive to go through his portfolio and research it. I don't really care about that either. It's not, I don't have a dog in that fight. But read through the pen before you start complaining and everything else because he has been executing. Okay? 53 is a lot of patents for a small entity, end chain, which is funded by someone who has money. And um, I'm not going to opine on how smart Craig Wright is or not, but they are executing. Okay? Number one. And number two, he has won the copyright to the Bitcoin white paper in the UK. The UK is one of the world's largest economies, and it has London, which is a financial center, probably the second behind New York, the first once it comes to currencies, and gold, or maybe the second, gold in New York, but, you know, one or two. So think about that, okay? That gives him a strategic uh, launch pad. Now, as for the NFTs and my patent, I suggest everybody take a look at Claim 1, right? Use an open mind and just plug the NFT in. It works. Okay? That means that um, a lot of big name brands who are being very aggressive in protecting their brand and IP, which I understand 100% and completely, okay, are being advised. Now we got dudes racing in the background. <laughs> Or being advised by, <laughs> by legal counsel, of which there was roughly a dozen or two, you know, at the conference. And everybody I talked to was either oblivious to the um, patent IP infringement risk or didn't agree they existed. I'm not a lawyer, so don't take this as legal advice, but take, take this as a recommendation to read for yourself. Okay? If Craig Wright were to, you know, you say he's, he's getting ready to put out these lawsuits how would those lawsuits affect you and your endeavors it wouldn't affect me at all i'm saying let's let's do a scenario he wins how would that look for you it wouldn't look at all he wins or loses you know no no I, benefit or or detriment to you none at all not that i could think of um if i say that something infringes i'm pretty confident about it um i can tell you right now we didn't do a full analysis on nfts um, we had a long conversation yesterday and day before yesterday with analysts and developers. They actually disagreed with me until we went step by step through the claims process. Okay. And now everybody's in full agreement. It's actually not that complicated, but you have to look at it as the patent expresses something. Uh, the patent is actually pretty powerful. And um, luckily I have it because I'm not looking to exploit. But imagine... If Jamie Diamond's one of Jamie Diamond's employees invented this and had it assigned over to JP Morgan. Okay? That would have been a JPM NYC conference, not an NFT <laughs> NYC conference. Okay? Um, so 
I'm going to divulge more on NFTs and um, IP rights and uh, the potential for infringement. We're going to delve deeper into this because there is a lot of money into in it, particularly if you understand how to use the technology correctly. I gave an example earlier, like serialization. Okay, the board at Yacht Club and all that, very good for marketing, for awareness. Um, but you know, not only you're not touching the surface, you haven't even reached the surface yet. Okay, and the advantage of having something like a serialized NFT, it can generate cash flow. Something that generates cash flows automatically has more price to build it. Because I give an example of an apartment building. You know, we pick an apartment building here, we're on. I give you an idea of what bed style looks like in 2022, which is very different from 30 years ago. Okay, so we have an, uh, uh, this is a mixed use building. If you take a look up there, the bottom floor is commercial, where there's a restaurant, okay? And the top three floors are residential. Let's say each floor throws off uh, $3,500, $4,000 in rent. This bottom floor, the commercial restaurant throws off, this would be more like maybe 6000 7000 right? Maybe six, 7000 in rent. So let's say five, 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 fifteen plus seven, twenty-two thousand dollars in rent per month that would be 220 plus another 40 260 something thousand dollars a year okay you could purchase this building for let's say five million dollars okay all of a sudden the market has a sharp correction the highest offer you get for this building is five hundred thousand dollars without cash flow you have a problem you have to hope sit back hope and wait the price goes up but you're making two hundred sixty something thousand dollars a year in cash flow so you're making 50 percent of the highest offer this time next year you're making the entire offer in cash every year it goes up you have price increases inflation etc so that cash flow cushions the price fluctuations gives you the ability now they're having a honking contest <laughs> so it, cash flow means a lot you can't get cash flow with uh, fake value and I now we got to go out to the board at Yacht Club fake value okay the ability to incorporate these cash flows gives you significant value appreciate um, value recognition so now you have capital appreciation and you have cash flow okay and with cash flow it gives you a different way of valuing it because now you take cash flows you project them 10 years out into the future you discount it back by a risk metric which is a discount factor you can value the property or you can value the property in the market the market is almost always wrong how do you know that because you're wealthy people if the market was always priced to perfection you can never buy something for less than it's worth which means when you bought it you bought it for exactly what it would be right but you have people who are much much better at math and much more objective and so they buy things for 70 percent of what it's worth or 50 percent of what it's worth then you have people who are very bad at math and very subjective, and they buy things for 120% of what it's worth or 400% of what it's worth. We need that, because that's how you have wealth concentrating. Right. The people who add and subtract that um, properly and don't put their feelings in the game, and the people who do solely feelings, do not do any math or research, and usually go off for tips. Like, hey, buy this N NFT. So that's it in a nutshell. Let's go over these questions. I'm sure we have some. Go over those questions for me, Blood. Yeah. I see my guy Minho is in the building. Where's the cigar? I got it right here. No worries about it. You know it. From a G's perspective, LJ is in the building. Okay. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. You, true. That, that true to you? Well, if you don't, if you don't own it, you don't have it. You can own something you don't have, but that doesn't mean you have it. So right. Right. That, that's what you would call credit risk and counterparty risk so yes, here sir. this is of significant value soon this should have been the world's first nft right this is my business card flip it over i don't want you to see that number right quick but that's my <laughs> business card right so i give this to blood okay he gives me an iou receipt i still own that mm -hmm. but i don't possess it that's the value of the blockchain that's right. what made me get into this in 2013. i read it and the first thing that came to mind was that I can, for the first time now, take an object 
and I can trifurcate it or tri quadrificate it, which is four, two times what bifurcating is. Right, yeah. So I can separate ownership and possession and custody. Forgot the fourth one. That three is enough. I separate ownership, possession, and custody. And I can separate it and spread it so I could give her ownership, her custody, and him possession. You could do that in the blockchain. You can't do that outside of the blockchain, at least um, to the best of my recollection. One of the questions was, um, are you doing any training? Blockchain, business, financial, financial training? Training? Yeah. Um, these videos are training. I yeah, drop a I lot of science in does. these videos. Yeah. He does. He drops a lot of knowledge, guys. Ask questions. Each NFT has a unique ID. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the whole point. It's supposed to be non-fungible. Tulip Mania. Yeah. <laughs> NFT's Tulip Mania? Yeah, except in Tulip Mania, at least you had a tulip. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> What's your views on the gaming sector in crypto space? Um, um, still underdeveloped, but there's a lot of promise there. Um, the best part about gaming is the fact that you can actually have real value as a currency going in and out of the game. So you can trade, you know, games always had their own currency. Not always, but for quite some time now. But now that currency can leave the game and come in from outside of the game. So imagine if you could use actual real dollars in any game. Yeah, that's the killer app right there. Also, not only currencies though, Reggie, but also assets, right? Game assets. Assets are currencies. When you trade the assets back and forth, you can actually make a currency if that value is accepted by somebody else. Mm -hmm. That would be either a fiat currency or a commodity currency. Okay, but you're right. Remember, I, I, I'm one of those like finance nerds. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> New York City tough. Voice of blockchain reality. Okay, I'm getting into Gala. Okay, um, I don't know what that is, but good for you, brother or sister. <laughs> it's a gaming uh, NFT platform. Okay. Uh, let's see that. Thank you. Who called Celsius for the scam? It is. Did you? Um, I didn't because I I don't really. This is the issue with Celsius and me. Um, I'm not one of those. It has to be decentralized, decentralized, right. decentralized, decentralized. But if you're going to get into a blockchain-based asset, why the hell would you put it into a centralized entity? You're defeating the purpose. Mm -hmm. You're walking forward two steps and then walking back six. Mm -hmm. So Celsius is basically an unregulated bank, a shadow bank. That's okay? why they were having so many pr right. problems in all those states. Right. Without, without the protections. Right, so, right, exactly. You know, you are getting... So their yield should have been, in the marketplace, should have been way lower than what you even get in the traditional let's say uh, certificate of deposit well actually their yield should have been much much higher you think so yeah, oh yeah because, because of the more risk, risk. Yeah. More risk. Right, and they right, should have right. been yielding like 40 50 percent 30 percent definitely not under 20. but clearly they that couldn't work because they couldn't keep the ponzi going at eight percent six percent i didn't call the ponzi he did <laughs> but i'm not gonna opine on it but if i do i go in rough so yeah because you yeah, know those facts hurt this. so yeah I actually um, talked to the CEO of Celsius yeah, I've met him um, at the March um, Bitcoin conference. Yeah, and, you know, and, uh, and yeah, yeah. Yep, in he Miami, brushed, right? Yeah, yep. he brushed me. He was polite, but politely brushed me off. So um, there are other issues that these entities are going to have, but we're not going to get into that right now either. I've, so what do you think about? Okay, we we know money is becoming more expensive, right? Interest rates are he heading higher. Mm -hmm. Do you see uh, a point where DeFi would be flipped, like so traditional uh, yield? would be higher than your DeFi or at least CeFi well, uh, platforms. It, it all depends on how you put the DeFi yield together. Remember, DeFi is technology. You know, don't believe Gary Gensler when he says these are all securities. It's technology. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it all depends on how you create the yield. Mm -hmm. So once you create the yield, you look in to see how it's created, you measure the risk that you take, and then you compare it to the reward. See, here's a definition of risk. It's real simple. Okay? I'm going to give you a two-part definition, part A and part B. Part A is the raw definition. Um, risk for a long asset holder is downside deviation from expected return. Mm -hmm. Okay. The traditional academic definition of risk is volatility. Right. But see, that doesn't work well. You buy Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you buy it at 20000 it shoots up to 150000 Volatility shoots through the roof. Do you have a problem with that? Okay. Only to the downside. Only to the downside. So <laughs> you need to measure volatility against your best interest. 
Okay, number one. Okay, what is risk? What does that definition stand for? Well, risk is the price that you pay for reward. So in order for you to be economically profitable, you want to pay less in terms of risk than you receive in reward. If you pay one unit of risk and get one unit of reward, you broke even. You could pay three units of risk for one unit of reward and you could have an accounting profit. Mm -hmm. And then you'd be like, Reggie doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Look, right. I made money. Right. You rolled the dice and you lucked out. Mm -hmm. Roll the dice 50 more times, you're going to crap out. Yeah. Okay. So you want to pay two units of risk and get five units of reward back. If you do that over time, you would make an economic profit, which would be all, uh, nearly guaranteed statistically accounting profit over time. Mm -hmm. Okay. That might sound like it's, you know, a little, it's not academic at all, right? But it is scientific and that's the way you need to approach it. This stuff is that technology. You cannot have a patent suit by buying stocks or bonds. You can have a patent suit and you can lose horribly if you use somebody's technology without their permission and they can prove that you did that and it was patented, right? That's gonna be a big, big difference going forward there's at least three patent holders who will all say that 2022 they're going to start forcibly uh, exercising their patent rights. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say Reggie's doing it. You know, there are other patent holders. There are other people in the world who didn't see this as you should never, you know, own your property. So okay? you got a guy you were talking to that has a patent and is going, what type of patent did he have? Um, uh, one has a data, um, a patent on data and data systems. Um, that's the guy who's going after the DAOs. Yeah. Maker DAO and yeah, Uniswap DAO in particular. Yeah. He also has the other, it also works with other projects, but I'm not going to comment on it because um, I'm not on anybody's side per se. Gotcha. Um, and you have the infamous uh, Voldemort, or he whose names cannot be mentioned because so many people seem to hate Craig Wright. And he doesn't seem to be the most personable guy, but again, you know, that's really irrelevant, right? Do the patents hold water? Yes or no? Okay, we still have 95 people on, on, Let's on board. Let's get those thumbs up, guys. Right, it's 95 people on board, 64 thumbs up. So, 50 people should do thumbs up and share it. Ask me questions. These are the times you need to ask the actual hardcore finance and technology questions. I'm willing to answer on these lives. Oh, Richard Hart. You got to have the Hexians in here. That's, okay. that's without a doubt. Um, what's, the dif what's the difference between... Uh, Before you go on, what's your opinion? What's your opinion of Richard Hart and Hex? Is Hex, uh, what do you think I about the Hex project? Enough, I don't know enough to um, give a real opinion. Um, he's clever. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's a uh, snakes. I don't think he's like a snake oil salesman. I okay. don't, but I don't know how sustainable that is. I mean, now he's, you know, he's got everyone sacrificing in the pulse chain or whatever that, I don't know. It sounds like a religion to me, but. <laughs> Uh, we got sacrifices and stuff going on, but yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't normally, I, if I don't know enough about it, I'm not going to give an opinion. So which I don't, is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know enough about hex to give a, a real solid um, opinion on it, guys. Okay. We Fair enough. Well, I've had a team of lawyers, um, analysts, and um, technologists look over it. And my opinion is posted on the Veritation Research section. So, so check you know, it out. you can go read that. Yeah, so we had someone say, um, Reggie did a great breakdown on Hex. Okay, someone read it. Reggie could be like Richard. <laughs> he needs to start new projects. Reggie could be like Richard. Well, why, why would Reggie want to be like Richard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me explain something. Reggie's sitting here with a shirt <laughs> on, okay? I'm not sitting in a king's chair. I don't have a chalice, right, with diamonds and rubies on it. I don't have a watch winder behind me with Rolexes <laughs> playing, and I don't have gold chains on, <laughs> right? Reggie could be like Reggie. If Reggie performed like that, you would call me all types of names. Yeah, you would. Right? Absolutely. Somebody from Reggie's demographic can't carry on like that. So fact. I'm not going to go any further That's on that. Fact. That's a fact. Yeah, I was actually insulted with that comment, but I don't think you relevant. intended that. So. so our DAO is going to be relevant in the future since you're kind of uh, you're testing that, that whole thesis. Yeah, I think they will be relevant. It's just that people have to understand what DAOs are, what their limits are. Um, DAOs, I think, are best used with a legal liability wrapper. Because without that, 
um, the members of the DAO are exposed, in my opinion. Yeah. Let's, let's go, guys. Get those likes up. There we go. Now we looking good with the thumbs up. Uh, let's see. Helping artists get into NFTs, good or bad. It all, it all depends on what your goal is and what the artist is. Getting into a technology is not good or bad, but if you get into a technology just to be into it, that's bad. That's like helping artists get into uh, uh, radio. Getting in radio is bad if you're a television actor, right? So remember, remember the NFTs are a technology, okay? They're not a panacea, it's not a universal solution, it's a technology. I think in the beginning I gave an example of serial, serialized NFTs right. that I think would be very cool. Yeah, so Reggie, uh, as a neophyte in crypto, what advice would you give me, brother, to be successful? That's learn. Broad. Learn. And learn from primary sources, not from newspaper articles. Most of the big artic most of the big news media sites in crypto are they not... compromised. Yeah. Right. They're, they're not news. They're corporate PR fronts. Yeah. And they said, look at the bottom of the disclaimer. It'll tell you up front. Okay? And then look at um, the entity that uh, they're talking about. I'm not going to name it. And you'll see. And look what the entity owns and what it does. So learn from primary sources. A court case comes up. You want to learn about the court case, the outcome, or the allegations? Go straight to the legal documents. Look at both sides. Don't look at just the plaintiff. Look at the plaintiff's papers and the defendant's papers. Usually someone alleges something. They do a press release. The newspapers run it as if it's a fact, okay? We all know that you have vested interests, you have ulterior motives, and you have entrenched interests, and you have highly discriminated against factions in crypto and all over the world. Yeah. Okay, don't fall for it. Now, Darrell's gonna, um, I think we answered that, didn't we? Okay, well, thank yeah. you, Robert. I think that made up a little bit for that. I <laughs> could be like, Richard Hart comment. Right, right, I'm like, come right, on, right. man. That's but I know you didn't mean well. He probably, yeah, I mean, you didn't mean he, harm, yeah, so. Yeah, he probably didn't. Um, let's see here. Uh, it's very a security. Not in my what's opinion. your thoughts on <laughs> ADA? Yeah, what's your thoughts on Cardano? Um, I haven't done a deep dive on Cardano yet. So, you know, he was on the uh, Hill. Congress, right? yeah, yeah. I didn't get a chance to watch it. I was actually in a live stream when that was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get any... I didn't watch it, but um, I heard what he said. And, you know, it's interesting. Well, I'm going to keep quiet. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, Charles is a smart guy. Um, he has vested interests. Like probably everybody who would go on the hill would. Right. But he's a smart guy, and his suggestion, um, interesting, but I don't think it would be adopted because... Not only do does the government want regulation through regulation, but they also have other outcomes that they desire as well. And a software-based regulatory solution is not going to give it to them. Mm. So it seems that more like a pie in the sky request, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, what does that say? Bringing us freedom through like DeFi it. and peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Thank you. You're welcome. Dragons. Okay. Let's see the future. What is the state of Veritasium today? Where is it today? Um, I suggest everybody goes to the Veritasium Telegram group. Um, it's Veritasium official on Telegram. And ask them, I don't own any Veritasium, any very tokens. Not that I know of. And um, uh, the company has been pretty much separated from Veritasium due to litigation. But I have um, promised that I would make the attempt, or I have said, didn't promise, that will make the attempt to add value to very tokens if I could do it legally and prudently. Um, an example I gave would be the um, using the very tokens to discount access to the patented IP. Um, there's going to be a lot more about that coming up in the next few months. Um, the actual patent and IP. Uh, just be patient. Stay stuff home. takes ta stuff takes time. Uh, let's see here. Are you moving out of Brooklyn? Why would he do that? I don't plan on it, but you know, you have a place for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not really a question. Um, Richard, don't play this hard or hard. Uh, how does OpenSea violate any patents that have already been established? Um, 
you know, go and read the patents that you think might have something to do with it. You can read my patent. Go read my patent, start at the first claim, and then see if um, what you see OpenSea does infringes. Okay, I'm not saying they do, but I mean, when you ask a question like that, most patents are public. Some big companies make an effort to make the patent private or hidden, and there's a way to do that. But most patents are public, and you can just read them. Patent applications are public, I'm sorry. All patents are public. Most patent applications are public. So when the patent is granted, you can just read the, through the description, read the claims, and plug and play. A lot of them were written in a very, very dense technical format. I'll admit it, my patent is not easy. But read the abstract, read the general description. That's written in plain English. It's easy to see. Okay, easy to understand. <laughs> I'm hoping you guys uh, that did sim swap and stole your bread gets a life sentence. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting story. I'll bring everybody up on that. So uh, I was sim swapped in 2017. I didn't tell everybody I was sim swapped because honestly, it's nobody's business. Um, the assets that were stolen were mine. Okay. One second. Wow. We have everybody who does have a muffler drive by now. <laughs> <laughs> So the assets that were stolen were mine. They weren't token holders. They weren't anybody's but my assets. It was just under $9 million. And um, or $9 million worth of assets. And um, it was done through a sin swap through my carrier, T-Mobile, who I now have a pretty big lawsuit against um, because they let the guys in. And uh, it was a bunch of teenagers. You know, guys, I think, ranging age from, uh, what, 17, 18, 19 years old. Uh, that was five years ago, okay? One guy, they've been, they've caught everybody, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one guy has pled, and I think he's probably, if he's not in jail now, he's going to jail. Um, two were indicted. One is in the UK. The one that is um, pled is in the US, in California. The, I'm not going to give their names, okay? One is in the UK. They tried to extradite him, and he won. Um, his extradition trial because they used uh, Epstein as an example, someone who died in custody, which wow. he did, so he was able to stay. Okay, you can give me something, just give me something. Um, and um, and uh, the third one is in Scotland, and I posted an article. It's not a meeting, I'm just doing a... A live stream. Yeah. So I'll pick something off the menu. She'll buy something. Um, wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> well, anyway, um, <laughs> the, um, the, uh, and the, the third guy is in Scotland. And he was 19 when he did the deed. And uh, he's currently going through an extradition trial. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, there's a fourth. Uh, these guys rob more than me. And through my backhand calculations, they are sitting on, they were sitting on roughly $230 million worth of crypto in 2017 terms. Okay? So that's at least a billion. You have at least a four times increase in all the major crypto, particularly Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is what they liquidated there. They went through Ethereum and then put it in Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's price in 2017 was somewhere around. 16, 17,000, right? No, 2017. No, it's more like six thousand. Six thousand. Yeah. Well, the yeah, end of end of 17 was like 20, right? You yeah. 20. Yeah. So even at 20. Uh, no, yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. So, well, anyway, they're sitting on a lot. Assuming that they uh, spent it a uh, decent amount of it, you can't liquidate Bitcoin or you can't liquidate digital assets that quickly and stay under cover. That's how the first guy got caught. A teenager's driving around a half a million dollar McLaren. He was speeding, got pulled over, and when asked whose car it was, he said it was my mom's car. Oh, I thought he said it was Reggie Middleton. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he should have said. Yeah, it was Reggie Middleton's, actually. <laughs> Unfortunately. And Reggie's a very frugal guy. Reggie yeah. doesn't, listen, Reggie doesn't even own a car. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm very, very frugal. So you can imagine how much it would bother me not to buy a car and have some guy who robbed me drive around in a half a million dollar McLaren. So... That's that story in a nutshell. Let's go over some more questions. Mm -hmm. Ask some real questions, the type of questions you won't get answers from in CoinDesk 
or Coin Telegraph or on other um, YouTube Live. Yeah. Okay. By the way, um, we're gonna have a block update coming soon. Okay. This is stuff you're not gonna find on Wall Street. You're not gonna find anywhere else in the crypto areas. And the Coinbase stuff. Again, I'm gonna have to push off to next week. We should have it out by next week. Killer. Killer. And as whatever everything I've been saying over upcoming uh, weeks about Coinbase and Block has come true. Block missed, like I said they would. They're getting increased competition, like I said they would. I said Coinbase's um, trading revenue is going to trend to zero. I said the industry is going to start trading these assets without commissions, um, and margins are going to get pressured down from increased uh, competition. Where else, where else could, could uh, Coinbase? Uh, see revenue streams from there are many places. First of all, um, Binance.us just introduced commission free Bitcoin trading. Uh oh, it's so it happened, they started exactly as I said. Think about uh, the game. yeah, think about this we have 4K video streaming, interactive um, commenting through YouTube. You stream YouTube live, right? Mm -hmm. How much you pay for that? Internet bill, okay. So it's quite possible you got to update and change your business model, right? Overcharging, and Coinbase does overcharge in my opinion. Yes. Overcharging for transaction fees is like going back to the 70s and the 80s where they overcharge for stock trading. Mm -hmm. And then this guy named Charles, Charles Schwab came up. Now. I'm so sorry, we let you use this for a bit of time. We're ordering something. Okay, okay. Okay. The, the I, I know, but so you, we never would have said, like, okay, sit here at past five if you're having a meeting. We don't allow computers in general. So it's more about the experience and all that. Okay. You see that number for now? I do. I do see that. I'm familiar. But you, and you did assure me that you would be gone before five. I said, if I'm not gone before five, then I would buy food. Do you, do you understand our stance and all about I don't, but I'm going to end this. Okay. okay. What's the restaurant's name? Oddly enough. Oddly enough, oddly enough, oddly enough in bed style, they want us to end the live stream. I ordered food. Actually, I don't think it's good business because I'm not disturbing anybody. No. If somebody came, it was a problem. I closed down. I did. I did give you money. I'm doing business. I'm here by myself. No, we totally understand. It's just we have a policy of not here. Okay. Well, okay. I, I, okay. I understand. I, I'm actually. I have like 109 people okay. who's we're going through this. So I'm going to end it in a minute. Okay. 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 So, oddly enough, asked me to close down, so we're going to shut this down. Um, I may do something a little later on, okay? Okay. Hey.